Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Frostgrave, and of course, to Going Medieval, where Beatrice and Tubman are currently busying themselves by bringing in all sorts of gubbins from outside. Now, since the last episode, we've actually had an update, so there are a couple of new quality of life features that are going to be in the game. Um, nothing that we've actually encountered an issue with as yet, but for those of you who are playing Going Medieval yourselves or considering it, uh, a few things of uh, note. One of them and probably the most important one, is your livestock are now going to be somewhat protected by your villagers and your other animals. So, for example, if you've got a dog and it's near one of your chickens, then a fox isn't even going to bother. It's going to decide, nope, that is, that is that is death, and it chooses life. It'll wait until the dog is gone far away from the chicken to make its move. Likewise, um, any kind of heat source, like a, a, a torch or a workstation which is heated and has a fire, uh, I think the focus there is on, on the fire element. That will also offer a degree of protection for your domesticated animals. Uh, in addition to this, workers, and this is probably the, the one that we're going to see the most, at least in the the immediate term is uh, your colonists will have a different interaction with wounds and that is probably best indicated by the patient role now patient this job is a focus on actually lying down and letting someone take care of you also birds birds we just saw a bird fly by that's apparently new and we'll see flocks of them gathering here and there hither and yon but uh, patient and convalesce convalesce is when you're wounded but you don't need treatment but you are wounded so you can lie down to rest a bit faster and patient is you're wounded and it's actually needs to be treated and for that you need to lie still for someone to come along and do it so i'm actually going to pop that up at a two and i'm going to move tubman's priority to a one on this one so that uh, they will uh tend someone before they themselves lie down and hope to be tended uh, along with that note as well there is in fact a self tend option now as well which will allow so for example had we gotten a nasty wound for Tubman in the first episode when they were on their own they wouldn't have been able to treat themselves because to normally be treated you have to lie down and someone else does the treating but now we do actually have the self tend option that's a pretty big change and a very very much welcomed one but other than that we worked on the last episode at getting a defensive fortification up and running. We also built our first shrine, the little Oak Brethren uh, shrine over here. Quite humble, but I feel that that's in keeping for the Oak Brethren. In addition to that, and possibly one of the most important things we did, is we finally got ourselves a salad. Now, it doesn't keep things completely chilled, but it's four degrees when the outside is near enough 20 degrees, so I consider this a big win for us. We can expand this out to increase its cooling capacity, but uh, we may be working on other things. Ah, fantastic. Those other things in question. Research. We are so behind the curve, and I think that's probably the biggest biggest change that having uh, the the solo start really imparts to you is it, you. It takes so much time to actually get up off your feet. We are into spring. We're three days out of twelve days into spring. We don't even know how to build beams across uh, to support our buildings, much less know how to farm. And that is a big problem. And as if the game heard my complaints, we have been given a new settler. Hunger comes calling. When Redwin arrived, his bones were prominent and his hair fell out in clumps. Frostgrave's people stared at this wretched, starving soul. Desperation was writ on Redwin's face, and he pleaded, Would you take him in? Well, let's have a look at you, Rodwin. What do we know about you? Uh, you're 26. That's that's good. 63 kilos. That kind of lines up with uh, this. Well, they're only 151 centimeters. I, I mean, I'm not sure your bones would be that prominent at 63 kilos when uh, 151 centimeters. Though that being said, 151 is a fair bit on the on the low side. But uh, you're a cunning shipwright. Your pseudonym was the Fool of Tau, and you are a restitutionist. Uh, it's hard for me to mouse over that, but anything left of the line in the middle is Oak Brethren, and anything right is Restitutionist. Mm, okay, so we will, be, we will be welcoming in another faith to our otherwise quite unified colony. Now, they've got seven in intellectual, which is a shame, but they have got very high in botany, which we may, in fact, need to try and get our farms up and running. All right, well, we're not going to turn you away. 
come along. That means we need more rooms then. Not enough beds, yes, I know. We weren't expecting guests. But first and foremost, we need to know a little bit more about Redwin, and starting with their true name. Everyone, please welcome Dakota to Frostgrave. There you are. Thank you very much for your patron support, Dakota. I hope you have a long and happy life here in Frostgrave, I, as soon as I build you a shrine and a bed. Uh, problems. All right, okay, well, the first thing we can do is we can actually quickly throw down a bed in here. Uh, so let's go to furniture, get a simple, hey, sleeping spot, pop that in there. Can I get anyone to prioritize constructing on it, Beatrum? I'm really sorry to wake you up, mate, but I need that bed down. Poor Dakota here is starving. Let's have a look at you. You're also a gobbler. I'm starting to wonder about this starving thing. Was, was this more of a, oh, I'm so starving. I haven't eaten in the last three minutes kind of thing. You're also a churl, mean and surly. Who have we welcomed into Frostgrave? Dakota is hard to work with and harder still to befriend. They are a gobbler. The only way to preserve food is to eat it quickly. At least that's what Dakota thinks. <sighs> Alright, let's have a little look at the pseudonym. What's the story behind this then? The Fool of Tau. Dakota had at one time played the fool at court. Oh, you literally were a fool, okay. And reveled in being allowed to insult the high and mighty, as long as he caused enough mirth to compensate. His cutting wit and humorous insults were unsurpassed. Okay, a bit of a bonus to intellectual there, which does make me wonder then why your intellectual is so low. That's a bit of a strange one. Uh, what is intellectual in here? There we are. Yeah, that that's it. it. It would be even lower if it weren't for the all that time you spent insulting people in such a way that you could get away with it without having your head chopped off. Awful at carpentry. Doesn't know what a bow is, but is somehow passionate about it. Um, does is actually not a bad medic and is passionate about that. Good mining skill though. And passion, double passioning and tailoring, but not very good at it yet. Uh, you know, you're, a, you're an aspiring tailor. You do not know how to talk to people. You also do not know how to talk to animals. I'm finding it hard to to find any redeeming qualities in you so far, Dakota. But I'm sure you will grow on us, Dakota Pain. Yes, pain for us, perhaps. I I don't know, but you are ravenous. You go ahead and grab yourself some food. You will get your bed up and running as quickly as we can and welcome back it is 3 a.m on the fourth day of spring and beatrum is already up and working on some research i've gone ahead and i've set up the various priorities for jobs as i feel we need beatrum has been given a much higher priority now on research than anything else we really do need to catch up because we are desperately far behind the curve and uh, dakota i mean they have been set up now as our primary medic but they've also got a couple of other areas where they're interested in to be fair they do have a pretty decent set of skills just they don't quite line up with the passion that we would want. Uh, I've also gone ahead and I've just tweaked the others a little bit here and there. As for the schedule, uh, Dakota and Tubman are on the same schedule, so they'll get up a little bit later in the day and then uh, get to things, assuming that they aren't uh, still tired. Now, hopefully we're going to see a fair bit of cooking being done. In fact, it looks like someone is preparing the cook fire for just that. Now, Dakota has grabbed the research bench. Nice. Okay. Well, in terms of research, let's have a look at how we've got five textbooks and we need a solid 15 even to get the first uh, item of research there. It may well be worth our time then, given that, for us to go ahead and place down a second research table just so that we can make some decent progress. But while all of that is going on, we also need to consider rooms. Now, I would very much like it for all of our people to have a private bedroom. I know such luxury. Do they even deserve it? And yet, I feel that it's going to be worth our while setting this up because then the whole structure can be repurposed somewhere down the line. Eventually, again, I want this to be a bit more of a village style uh, style settlement. So having private rooms, having private homes is going to be something we're going to be aiming for anyway. And also that'll free up this room for something else. Now, I'm going to pause it there just so I can quickly lay some things out. Let's see. I think a uh, two by three room would be more than enough for each person. How will that fit into this space though? Uh, it actually wouldn't be too bad, all things considered. I could do something along these lines and still have a door 
on this side. Though that being said, we could expand the rooms out in this direction instead. And then we'd have a bit more of a corridor entering in. And I kind of like that idea. I know it's a little bit hard to see what I'm talking about here, but there we go. So we'd have three two by three rooms and a little bit of a, a walking space in in uh, leading up to them. Now, where are we going to put the doors? I think we're going to have the doors in spaces like this. You've got to hover over it just right to replace a wall rather than build on top of it. And we're also going to want uh, windows for each room, so we'll do something like that. There we go, and each one now has its own window. And then further to that, we can add in a little bit more just by there, for example. Actually, I kind of like the idea of moving this door because then we can have a little backgammon table right there. You know, a little bit of uh, morning backgammon. Keep their minds fresh and their competitive spirit keen. Uh, let's go ahead and pop down something like that, just about there. And that way they can uh, sit by the windows, you know, looking out. We could have a little brazier perhaps tucked in here. And in each room will have its own heating as well. I think that would be quite important. I did not mean to place that out there, so let's get rid of that. But I think this is a decent enough uh, space for us to go for. Now, this is going to require an awful lot of materials, of course. Uh, as far as furniture, we really don't have anything better than a just a sleeping mat. So that's all it's going to be. Uh, do we have something better to make the brazier out of? We don't have any limestone yet, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, it is what it is, I suppose. Uh, I don't... I'm not best pleased with putting a brazier right next to a bed, especially a straw bed, but I guess I don't have much option right now. So we're going to just do the best with what we can. Actually, let's think, think in the future here. Now, this is a mistake I've made in previous playthroughs, and that is, whilst the hay sleeping spot is only two tiles long, when you go to an actual bed, it is three. So I'm afraid we are, in fact, going to have to just accept and put these uh, braziers next to the beds themselves. So something along these lines will do. And we'll have a little one in this room as well. This should be more than enough then to get them through winter, but they're probably not going to have to have all of this lit all of the time, or at least I certainly hope not. Now, I'm going to let them get on with that. Beatrum's already gotten a little bit, bit better at construction. That's fantastic. In fact, uh, Beatrum, considering you're our primary researcher, oh, you're also the best constructor that we have, realistically. Though you could hand that job over. I'm going to pop that job down to a three. I would like you to focus on the on the things that you are meant to be focusing on. on and uh, that's going to be true of everyone. Uh, construction can be a... Until we've got a primary constructor. And that is not someone that we're relying on to do other things as well. Uh, I would like you to focus on that. Research really is the top priority right now. Uh, other than what I'm about to give you as another priority. And that is get these bloody berries in. We need those berries so badly. Uh, if only we had agriculture, I could at the very least plant some berry bushes. But alas, until research is done, no berries for us. So that is why research really does have to take the top priority for a little while. All right, I'm going to let people gather up the materials for all the constructions that I've laid out, and I will bring you back when there's something more to report. Oh, well. An angry boar just took out a wolf by the look of it, and now the crows are pecking at the wolf. No, no, that is our carcass. I would like that brought in and cooked. Uh, in fact, actually, I should make sure that cooking is a higher priority as a consequence as well. Uh, cooking really isn't a high priority. I will pop up. Mm, let's pop down cutting plants. I know your botany is really high, but we'll, we'll wait on that one. Um, you can have it a little bit higher, but I would like Dakota to work on cooking. It only seems fit, uh, fitting that the person who's going to do the most of the eating also does the most of the cooking. It is almost halfway through spring. We have done a fair bit of work on the uh, structure of this area. I actually moved the backgammon table, table over in order to save on some resources. But we are finally at the point where we've got enough books that we can unlock architecture. There we go, we now have the wooden beams, which we will almost certainly be using in the very near, uh, in the very, very near future to expand out our cellar. Now the next target for us is agriculture with 10 bucks, and then after that, another 20 to get preserving food. This will give us smoke houses and shelves. The shelves are gonna be of particular um, importance to us. Dakota is currently uh, chopping up some uh, something. Uh, I imagine one of the carcasses. I actually used the overview over here to look for the various carcasses on the map, and there were quite a few. There were some deer, some wolves, and uh, a rat as well that we've uh, managed to bring in. Now, unfortunately, you failed that little construction there, but I will forgive you for now. Uh, I am also going to change up the 
designs of these walls uh, in a little bit. Right now, it's not too much of a concern. But in terms of our material, how much uh, raw material we got? We got plenty of sticks. We've got a little bit of limestone, a lot of dirt, unfortunately. How about textiles? We've got some leather, uh, fodder. We've got not that much hay, frankly. And we're going to need a fair bit of it in order to build out this roof over here. Now let's have a look around. Are there any places where I could easily gather some, or am I going to have to wait a little bit later in the year to be able to easily get that from out there? I think we might. So, unfortunately, for the time being, these roofs are going to have to be made out of, uh, I'm going to say, wicker then. Uh, it's got a reasonable thermal insulation, so it's still not a terrible one. Let's go ahead and get this all the way down there. At that point, these rooms will be ready. Uh, they won't have their braziers yet, but we are working on that. But once we've got everyone in there, that should actually bring up the mood of all of our colonists, since they'll all have private rooms, and that is quite the luxury in this day and age, I would imagine. We also need to work on the restitution uh, temple, or rather shrine, and I suppose I could throw something like that down around here. Now, the key thing is you never want it to be something where anyone who is not of that faith ever has to walk through there for any reason at all. Uh, so a little bit of something just built over the back here would be okay. It's a shame that this uh, room is so perfectly symmetrical as it's going to cause me some problems. But let's go ahead and do something like this. Bring this out. Now, I guess we could build for the future with this if we really wanted to. I suppose that isn't a terrible idea. Uh, sure. Let's go ahead and take this. Now, I would love it if I had some limestone, as I feel the Restitutionists fit better with a stone building. But we don't really have that option for us right now, so we'll just go with what we've got. Aha! Now, we're going to need a support structure on this side to be able to build this roof, and that is exactly where these wooden beams come in. If we place it, this there, it, it uh, basically shares um, support from the ground across that entire thing. So this should allow us now to place down this roof correctly, and there we go, we'll get a little roof along there, and we'll build this out to be a little restitution in shrine. But I'm going to allow our peeps to get more work done. Uh, Beatrum is making some rapid progress with the research, and I'm very, very happy with that, and I will bring you back when there is more to report. Okay, we have managed to finish off the roof. We've still got a couple of branches to place down, but at the moment we have three rooms that we can now turn into bedrooms. Let me just make sure that all of these are on fairly low intensity. There we go, that should be fine. And in so far as the materials, no coal there, please. Only sticks. You can use sticks and sticks alone for these braziers. In fact, I kind of feel that about all braziers in the colony, so let's just grab all of them. Thankfully, they are all easy enough for me to get to, and they're all made of the same material, though I've missed out on that one. Let me just reselect everything again. Just make sure that everything is set up correctly. All low intensity, all medium priority. There we go. Now, with that done, we can finally move these beds across. That's one. Oh, actually, no, I copied that one. I make that mistake more often than I would like to admit. There we go. Move that one, and then you, and then finally you as well, and then our uh, colonists actually have their own private spaces, which I think will probably lift their spirits quite a lot, or at least they bloody well should. Uh, let's go ahead and change up these walls as well, just because I can, and I think it looks nicer to have things like this set up properly. There we go, and rotate, and then select these ones, and they should already be facing the right direction. That's, that's perfect. I'm very, very happy with that. We are still working on the Restitutionist Shrine down here. It's going to take us a little bit more time to get all of that up and running. But how are we doing for research? We've got eight of the requisite ten. Uh, we're already halfway. This is the, the actual midpoint of spring right now. And so uh, I'm a little bit disappointed that we haven't already started to get farming up and about. But it is what it is. Beatrum is doing an amazing job, though, of writing all of the chronicles. Uh, Dakota is currently hauling, and Tubman is constructing. But let's have a quick gander at our food, shall we? It's nice and easy over here. By the way, if you're wondering how I've got all of that into a nice compact list instead of a uh, much larger list, uh, that is, let me see, group item resources in control panel. So if you have it uh, toggled off, 
then this is what you see, which is a bit of a, a bit much for you to look through. I find it very, very easy to do that. Now, in terms of raw materials, we've got 86 red currants and 99 raw meat. And we've got three roasted meats, three stews, and two breads. Very, very happy with that. Now, we've made our very first chamber over here. Let's have a quick look at that. There we go. Looking very nice. And now this has technically become a chamber as well. Enjoy it while it lasts, Dakota, because uh, that is going to change very, very soon. Uh, there we go, we can turn that overlay off, that's perfect. New chamber created, but we do now have research available, we can finally get agriculture. There we are, ten books assigned. Okay, we've got the tutorial for farming, but we're not going to need that one for now. We've also got preserving food. Now this was going to take 20, and I again, I want Beatrim to really focus on that for the, for the next little while, so that we can get that up and running. Now, where are we going to want to put our farms? Don't really want to be too far out here, but at the same time, having that in front of the Oak Brethren Shrine kind of makes sense to me. So I think we can lay something down to that end. I am going to have to focus on getting a few other things done, though, because right now we're very, very lacking in storage space. Now, my ideal scenario would be to have some sort of storage area down here. Possibly down below. We know that a, a stairway only takes three tiles So we could have something like that over here and have this just go down into an indoors storage room And I kind of like that idea. So let me go ahead and set something like that up It'll just be a few moments. Ah, oh, look at Alacrams being such a good papa Hauling for the colony. I finally noticed how I could do that. By the way, thank you very much for the, the comments. I thought that uh, trained domestic animals just did it periodically, more or less, as they do in RimWorld. But you actually have to go into Overview and Domestic Animals to change this. So Alacramps has now been set up to haul and also to uh, deal with vermin control. So Alacramps will take on uh, rats or other small vermin that might cause a bit of problems in the colony. You can assign them to a particular settler. And I kind of feel that maybe uh, they should be assigned to Tubman and then set to be a battle uh, battle animal though I feel that, that is probably a role better suited to a bear and yes you absolutely could if I, if my understanding is is correct domesticate a bear if you have the opportunity and are patient enough you might end up with battle bears uh, that might be a very 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 long-term goal, but yeah, it's something to aim for, I suppose. Uh, Dakota is getting the final bit of work over here done, so that we can finally place down a stair. So let's uh, prepare that stair to go in there. We're going to use a wood stair for this one. There we are. Now, it's going to require us to dig out some wood, of course, but then we are also going to dig through that tile. Though we do still need a fair bit more wood to finish off the Restitutionist Shrine. Uh, let's have a look out here. We'll get these trees over there all chopped. But that is uh, good enough for now. Uh, we do need to start considering the cabbage fields. Now, if we have a look at this, uh, we should be able to set this up with a couple of different things. I don't know which seeds we have available. I don't believe we started with any, if I'm, if I'm honest with you. So let's just have a look in here. Seeds. Do we have any seeds in particular? We've got some beet seeds, some cabbage seeds, carrot seeds, and herb seeds. Okay, that's actually not bad. We've only got a, a few of each of them. Did we buy those? We may have bought those. I don't recall. But we've got plenty of herb seeds at the very least. So uh, we may be able to get a little bit of a farm started. It's going to be very small for the cabbage of the carrots and the beets. But, you know, we can aim to increase it in time. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and lay something down. There we go. Not much of a farm, I grant you. We have got uh, beets to... Uh, sorry, cabbages over here. Now, you can choose when to harvest them and that will affect the seeds you get back now we've got very few seeds of more or less anything but herbs and red currants so i'm actually going to ask them to focus on getting seeds i want two seeds per seed put in so that means that we're going to lose a little bit of the yield on the cabbage by a little bit almost half of it but i'm willing to accept that we're going to do the same for the carrots i would like them to be flowering it looks oh we're going to lose even more with the carrots but again we want to build out this farm eventually once we've got this farm fully stocked then we can start focusing on just getting the produce same over here with the beet fields that's how that's even worse with the beets that we'll get massive amounts of seeds from beets if we just wanted to, to let it go to seed we could actually get a beet field pretty quickly it's tempting i'm not gonna lie uh as for the herbs we'll just wait for those 
however they come, and the same with the red currants. The red currants themselves are the seeds, so that should all be fairly easy for us to get up and running. And whilst all of that's going down, because I don't want wildlife just coming in here and nibbling on our fields, let's go ahead and build a little fence around it. Again, this is more of a garden than it is a, a farm. But that's all we need to get started, so I'm happy enough with that, I think. We'll have uh, a couple of little fences here and there on uh, these sides. Let's get rid of these. Or rather, I mean to say, uh, we'll have a couple of gates. So we can get there, 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 and indeed here. There we go. I think this will be a lovely little place for our colonists to actually just start growing their own food. Now, eventually, I do want proper big fields, and that's... And I'm talking proper big fields. We're, we're not uh, just slightly bigger gardens. I mean a massive field taking up a huge amount of room. All of that barley for beer. I think the colonists will be very happy because they, they seem to be very um, opposed to the idea of drinking water. So uh, it's going to be the only kind of liquid uh, that they're going to be uh, taking in. So we do need to get on that as quickly as we can. But again, that's going to be down to research. Uh, we aren't too far away from getting the preserving foods, though. We're over halfway now. I'm happy with that progress. And look at Dakota straight away getting those red currant bushes planted. Thank you very much, Dakota. You crack on. Merchant caravan has arrived. A scent of spices on the breeze precede the arrival of a merchant caravan, lifting the spirits of Frostgrave's inhabitants. Did it bring furs, cloth, or tidings from the wider world? I have so much to offer you good people, the mercer said, uh, cried out. Come, let us make a deal. Of course he would cry out. He's probably quite far away at the moment. Uh, where, where is the mercer? Uh, at this point, he's probably in the caravan. Uh, no, he hasn't actually reached the settlement yet. Okay, well, I guess we're waiting for a little bit longer. Uh, though I did notice while we were looking out that there are... Uh, what's... Ah, there we are. Oh, you've got a bit of a guard with you. I like it. Maybe we will end up being able to manipulate uh, the weaves of fate such that uh, an attack would coincide with a merchant's visit, and their guard can help us on the defense. Who knows if that's going to be possible. But I thought I spied some mushrooms out and about. I may have been imagining it, though. Oh, well. Either way, let's wait for the merchants to get down here, and hopefully we'll be able to make a couple of trades with them. The little farm slash garden is coming along nicely. I'm quite happy with that. And also, we've almost finished the last bits for the restitution. Sorry. I'm very, very much liking the look of the uh, the rules right now as well right let's find out who's the best talker that we've got who's the best uh, conversationalist let's actually bring up Beatrim let's have a look at you you've got in terms of speechcraft four so it's definitely not you zero for Dakota but we knew that was going to be the, oh, with a very humble nine speechcraft Tubman is the is the silver tongue of the colony Okay, Tubman, let's uh, get down there and have a quick barter. Now, this is going to offer me an opportunity to showcase one of the other changes that have come in. Uh, what are you doing down there, Elizabeth? Are you taking stock of our ways? Rather rude, but I suppose, should I expect anything else from a greedy merchant, my lord? Now, gold coins have finally been reintroduced. Yes, we are after a cl calamitous plague event that absolutely decimated the population of not just the British Isles, but uh, presumably the world. But it didn't take very long for the people to decide that, ah, you know what, instead of focusing on survival, let's bring back money of all of the things that we could be pour pouring our efforts into. So now gold coins exist. Now we can't make gold coins. We cannot smelt our own. We can only trade them, but we can smelt them down into gold. So in that regard, I th that is a nice way of having a, uh, a a flow of gold into the colony. Now there are other advantages, and that is that gold is the de facto um, unit of value, not of currency, but of value. A gold coin will always be value one, and as a consequence, and in much the same way that why, you know, we gradually moved away from a bartering economy, it, there is a there is value to be had in having a stable currency of exchange. We can purchase these coins for for any trade goods, or we can just go along with trading. But a consequence of this is that a lot of values have been moved around now. 
Uh, let's have a quick look. What could I sell? I could sell some bread. I could sell clay. I could sell the Chronicles. That's not going to happen. Uh, I could sell an inordinate amount of dirt. And you would actually buy it. Okay, not really sure what the story is there, but uh, I'm down for it, I suppose. You have some honey. You've got a horned helmet. Ice blocks. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, so we can put ice blocks into our cellar. And it does exactly what you think. It will help to pull the temperature down. Now, I'm assuming that once you pull the temperature down enough, the ice is effectively keeping itself frozen. It'll be an interesting uh, thing to look at whether we can do that or not. You probably need an enormous amount of ice to be able to achieve those kind of temperatures, much in the same way in real life when the, the servants of the manor would go out of, uh, of a winter's eve and collect massive slabs of ice from the, uh, the, gr the river running through the grounds of the manor and uh, bring it back into the cold room. They would literally stack it so full of ice that the ice itself would just keep the whole thing frozen throughout the year and would refreeze water put in there. Um, now, let's have a quick look. You have got... So we've got some clothes that we can actually sell, as it happens. Is there any any information about this? No, it doesn't really give us any further information, which is a bit of a, a, bit of a shame, because that would be useful info for us to have. I can sell a decent amount of tallow, though. Um, sure, I don't really see any reason for us to keep that around. I'm not going to sell the stews, but okay, let's give me a few seconds to ponder over our options here. All right, so I am offering up 35 tallow, 8 wolf leather, 1 rat leather, 100 deer leather, and 14 dirt. In exchange, I'm purchasing a dagger for Dakota, 6 flax seeds, 6 barley seeds, we're speaking about barley, 4 beet seeds, 4 cabbage seeds, 4 carrot seeds, 1 uh, set of winter clothes, which is sturdy, and 2 whole chronicles. I would have liked to have purchased more chronicles, but I felt getting a weapon and some more clothing was a little bit more important for the immediate and also for the sake of growing our crops, getting all of those seeds was especially useful as well. That We pretty much maxed out their capacity to take items just in pure weight. That's the only thing stopping me from selling a little bit more. But okay, we're going to go ahead with that. Yes, I will accept this. I don't need any gold. That is fine. Thank you ever so much. That is marvelous. And that also means that our little garden is going to grow even further. So I've decided that given that, I'm actually going to use this as a seeding garden. Instead, we're going to have one instance of every type of crop that we can grow, probably in a small field. This one is a bit of an exception. This is just here for food, really. Um, and we will use this space to try and grow out our seed stock. So now that we've got that barley, we should be able to pop down the flax and the barley over here into a little area, something like this, flax field as well. So we're already outgrown our tiny little area. That's kind of annoying, but oh well. Uh, gonna have to demolish all of this. Unfortunately, you can't move these around, but I'm gonna go ahead and expand this out a little bit. That was a really, really good bit of trading. I'm super happy with that, but that has now necessitated that we get stuff moved around a lot faster. We've got good clothes out there that are going to start getting very, very messed up. Oh, actually, you know what? We've got a bit of room in here. Those chronicles, have they given us enough? They have! Oh, fantastic! Now, I could go for fermenting, considering we've been talking about that, but no. We're going to go for preserving food. And that's going to give us a shelf. And that means that we can tear up the flooring in our cellar. Because food will then be put on shelves, the floor, it won't matter that there's nothing covering the floor because we're not going to be putting anything on the floor. This is going to be huge for us, so we're going to unlock that one straight away. Now, my next uh, focus, I suppose, will probably be on tailoring and furniture. One or the other. I, eh, fermenting is also kind of useful, I, I will admit. But uh, right now, the primary focus is expanding our little garden over here, and uh, I will bring it back when there's more to report. Not bad for our first big trade of spring. There we are. Look at that fantastic garden here. Now, interestingly, with the barley field, there isn't uh, any particular um, high 
uh, seed yield state to you either harvest it you either don't harvest it or you harvest it when it's ripe but it, it much like red currant barley itself is the seed so that makes sense flax much the same you have to harvest it when it's ripe but you will get five flax seeds and 11 linen cloth straight up you don't need to do any kind of spinning though i can only imagine that's going to be coming in the future it seems a little bit out of place that you don't have to do any further processing whatsoever but uh, it is what it is now let's have a quick look at the overview i would like to look at carcasses please it doesn't look like the wolves have taken care of any uh any of the wildlife so we're going to want to look for retaliate specifically we don't want to have to deal with anything that does and I'm not going to hunt polecats. That's uh, never going to happen. I will watch our colonists starve instead of hunting polecats. Okay, if our dogs are starving, this might be just a kind of like a nature dog. Uh, uh, the, the atom bro me will be like, well, you know, we can't get involved. We we must let nature play its course. The dog is going to hunt the polecat and it's going to eat the polecat and the dog is going to... That's just the beauty of nature. It's beautiful and cruel in equal measure. But our people could just go hungry. Uh, however, we are going to want to take out some of the deer. We've got plenty of, uh, of bucks there. Let's go ahead and cull the oldest. Uh, let's not cull all of them. Uh, actually, you know, that doesn't matter too much. Sure, let's get out there and uh, cull the bucks. We have got a bit of retaliation on them. Uh, all of the adults will have a, a bit of retaliation, but it's nothing like the boars, and that's the important part. Also, when, even when they do retaliate, it's still nothing like the boars, so again, not too much of a concern. As far as research is going, Beatrum is really starting to get into the swing of things now, so I'm very, very happy with that. So, the next thing that I'm going to be working on is focusing on trying to get the uh, storage room set up so that we can bring everything in. And uh, once we've got that and the restitution at Shrine done, we can finally start looking at the cellar. Though I suppose I could do a little bit of something down here already, couldn't I? Yes, of course I could. Uh, let's go ahead and start placing down some of these shelves. Now, they require a fair bit of wood, so it's uh, not a cheap option by far. But let's get a couple of these done. And once I've got all of those done, I'm going to strip these storage spaces up. And then uh, we're only going to have shelves down here. That should help out. And we'll also start expanding out further as well. We'll have branching rooms. But we're only going to branch out in this direction. And the reason for that, and only as far as this, by the way, is so that we stay two tiles down from any kind of heat source. And uh, since I'm expanding into this area over here, we're going to have a storage space there. Having our cooling areas down here wouldn't work out so well for us. Right, well, I've got a lot of uh, plans and an awful lot of work for our peeps to do, but uh, just going to have to wait for them to do some of it. Come on, Tubman, you're our best marksman. Don't let us down. Uh, oh, no, there it is. I thought it just blinked out of existence. Well done, though it would be great if you would also bring the carcass back. Uh, I may have to train Tubman in a little bit of uh, the do's and don'ts of hunting. Also, we've got a uh, wolf out here as well that's been currently eaten by a polecat. Ah, nature. So beautiful. Oh, now this is wonderful. The carcass is bringing in the crows, and they're currently circling overhead. I love little details like this. Now, the birds are, for all intents and purposes, purely visual in the game. You can't interact with them, you can't hunt them, you can't get any dropped feathers or anything like that. They are just there to add a little bit of atmosphere, but come on. The atmosphere they add. And also, it kind of highlights places on the map where there's a carcass. That's actually kind of useful, I'm not going to lie. And much in, like in real life, pay attention to birds. Once again, Tubman is leaving a kill behind and just heading... I don't even... Tubman, we need to talk. But we have some research available. We've got fermenting, we've got furniture. Now, as I mentioned, I would like to get tailoring up and running reasonably soon because I'm a little bit worried that we're going to run out of clothing in the future. Also, I believe tailoring may give us access to some very light armors, but furniture will give us access to a couple of other things. Wall-mounted weapon racks, bookshelves, weapon racks, bookshelves that just standing variants, stone chairs, wooden chairs, and of course, the wooden hay bed. The bookshelves, the wall-mounted weapon rack, and uh, the, the standing variants, they are actually storage appliance much like the shelf is going to be for our cellar and they store weapons or shields and books respectively 
Because of that, I think this is going to be worth us getting. We're about to build a uh, larger stockpile for general items, and I think having a much more effective use of the of the floor space is going to be very important to us. But I'm afraid it looks like we have run out of time. So what have we managed to do in today's episode? Well, we have done a lot of research, and that has opened up a lot of important things for us. Namely, we've got the farm up and running. We are, as I mentioned, most of the way through spring now, and we finally have somewhere that will produce seeds. It's not going to produce a lot of food for us. It'll produce a little bit, but mostly this is there to make sure that we've always got some seeds. We have expanded out the, uh, the workshop area to have two research benches, though I don't believe that's ever been used, and we are in the process of trying to excavate a storage pile so that we can move this out and expand this into just one large kitchen. Tubman is currently working on a restitution, is trying something that Dakota, our most recent uh, inhabitant of Frostgrave, has desperately been wanting for a little while now. So they can finally observe their religious uh, their, their religious observances, I guess. Now, the other thing that we've worked on, and I'm actually quite pleased with this, we've got not only a new settler, but we have private rooms for everyone, including the new settler. That is quite an achievement this early on, I feel. Though how long we're going to be able to maintain that, I'm not sure. It's been another quiet season, though, no attacks, and that is making me worry a little bit, because as with uh, Phoebe in in Rimworld, it isn't that Phoebe is particularly aggressive as a storyteller, it's just that Phoebe gives you so long to just relax between attacks that the next attack is probably going to jump up in difficulty very sharply compared to what we're used to and uh, whether or not we're going to be ready for it is the big question. But I hope you're going to be sticking with me to find out the answer to that question in the coming episodes. That's going to be it from me for now though. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you're enjoying the story of Frostgrave. But until next time, and as always, do take care.